proven methods to, to use this. They didn't use regression type models, and then we'll talk about structural time series and state space models, which is a bit more complicated, but also a lot more flexible to, to, to approach time series data. So the aim for today is basically to understand basic difficulties with time series data, why we need them, especially specific models, and then to construct a few simple ones useful models. Um, so, there are a couple of references here. Um, there's a Feynman, he's a, a financier, but there's an open textbook online which is very, very good. It's quite basic and very nice. And then um, there's a course from three people in environmental. Second thing, a more technical data online book thing. Okay, so typical time series data to get the Manadoa atmospheric CO2 concentration. Um, everything is over time, over year. What you see is that. Um, Monthly observations, monthly averages. Um, seasonal effects, there's a trend that observations that are close together are similar. Okay, so these are the typical time series features. Autocorrelation, um, shark attacks, but I put this in specifically so that you see it's not always just normal data, it can count this Florida social. Actually, increases number of attacks, increases a number of fatalities. So these are specific accounts, rare things that happen over time. Time series that looks a bit different. Um, financial data looks like a lot of formal stock, daily closing price. Um, so autocorrelation means values that are close together are very similar. There's Taking over time, there's not a lot of seasonality here or full cycle or anything like that. Sunspot data, um, average annual sunspot data, so you can see these clear cycles over time. Fortunately, Australian electricity production also clear cycles or seasonality. Seasonality changes over time. There's a trend. There's some other things to pay as well. And um, tree ring data, so lots of different kinds of data sets. So it almost looks like it's just random variation, but there's some clear little cycles in there. So this is about 8,000 years of tree ring data. And this is one that we're going to look at a bit more closely because it's a regression type thing. We want to, this is electricity demand daily. So this is over a whole year, 52 weeks. Um, you can see a weekly trend or a weekly seasonality, seasonal effect. Um, this is work day, explanatory variable. Okay, work day is weekend. And temperature data, so you assume that it's very cold, they use more electricity for heating, and if it's very hot, they use air conditioning for cooling. Okay, so we're going to use those variables to try and explain electricity. Okay, so usually the goals of the time series, different goals of the time series, one of them is prediction and forecasting, what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, we need models to understand to do that. We can look at the impact of a single event or an intervention, something like that, something happened on this like a exchange after that, study causal patterns. And another thing that I did put here is some that I'm interested in is changes over time. 
of seniority or gender or things like that. Will it change over time? Can we think so? Okay, so just quickly one time series will look like in R. So R has a specific, I'm assuming that you have a good regression of R. Yeah. So here's the CO2 data. I have a specific way of, of storing or capturing time series. It's not in a the type of data parameter is a specific way. For example, CO2 data, this was monthly. So for every year, you can see it's stored like in columns for every month, in columns, every year in rows. Okay, so that's one way that we can print it and you just print it like that. The tree ring data will, it will print like this. It's a time series object, a TS object. So this time series it starts at 8,000 years ago. Uh, I've just printed it in front of it. And then it tells you, okay, there's one observation. Per year, the yearly data and the other observation. So you get the beginner thing. And if you want to, if you have data that you want to make it into a time series, this is one way of doing it. For example, if you have quarterly data, four observations per year, you could do it like that. I just generated random values, frequencies for them in four observations per year. And I'm starting only in the second quarter of 2019, and then it will print it like that. Okay, so now I've created this time series object. It's just how I was forced to the time series data. And it makes it a lot easier for lots of data. We can just map what goes onto the next table. Back to the table data to be found. So when and why do we need time series models? Mostly if you have autocorrelation in your residuals. So autocorrelation means that the observation now is correlated to previous observations. Auto because it's in the same time series. It's correlated to it comparing previous values. Okay? And that's an after modeling trend seasonality effect. Manager variables that you do with the question. Will have autocorrelation in your residuals that you do time series one that you need to adjust for that. If you ignore autocorrelation, then your standard error estimates will be wrong, your predictions will be wrong, your x statistics and p values, all of that will be wrong. So guess what the standard error is of? Um, I don't actually know which what, way it goes. So sometimes I think you, you're being too conservative, sometimes I think you're being too optimistic in terms of your standard errors. Go both ways. I'll show you an example later. Okay, so just definitions. I'm going to call my time series the response, the, the thing I'm measuring, I'm going to call Y, and I'm going to denote it as for discrete steps. So you're measuring something at discrete time intervals. And I'm not going to talk about continuous time, I'm just going to talk about measuring it at regular maximums. Okay, up from one up to time t. I'm going to use subscript. Autocorrelation means already said correlation of your own previous values. Okay, so some um, fundamental Types of time series processes, these pop up everywhere, and they're part of the, of the bigger models that we're going to call. So, an AR process and for auto regressive process. So, that basically means you, you're regressing on yourself, the previous values of yourself. For example, if you have an auto regressive, the P should be a 2 there. Auto regressive process of order 2, you take them using XT here. Plus the second thing. And then you're progressing on your previous two values of yourself. So it's five times, so you're 
own weight of your pivot value plus 5, 2 times x2, t minus 2. The t minus 2 is f, f2 times the pivot. And the special case of that is an auto-reversive process of order 1. And on one process, and you just say there. My value now, I can predict from my previous value and then some extra error. Okay, so it's correlated with my previous value, which implies the correlation coefficient. And I can basically get that from this one. So if I want to predict my y, I just take the previous observation and for me to predict. Okay, so I also have to think about why I would need to make the data number. I've thought about this a lot. <laughs> so for me, it's so if you, if you look at the look at temperature, if you look at any process, why would anything be like the previous value or just down weight? And to me, so if you put everything, all the explanatory variables, all the, the things that influence temperature, for example, into this previous measure. Okay, so you don't have covariates, you put everything in there, the measure of, of all the influences of temperature in the previous time step. And then you downweight it. So the, the effect of previous time steps decreases over time. So everything back in regression, like everything you didn't measure it or explain to a so you summarize all that you don't know with the previous value that you best get from what you explain to a variable on and what's going on. Then you downweight it to that and error to it. Um, so a special case of this is a random walk where you don't have to tie it in. Okay? So it's not downweighted, it's just the previous value. So random walk next step I then get to this point and the next step I'm just adding zero to a given time. Okay. Um, just one thing I want you to note here is that the auto-regressive process, so if my error comes in at this time point, it's part of this of this observation, it will be part of the next observation, will be part of the next observation, because it all goes into XT. And then the next one depends on this whole XT. So once you have error or shock, it influences the future observation forever. Okay? And it just slowly, the effect slowly increases by the factor of 5. Okay. And then, so here are different auto regressive one processes with different five coefficients in auto correlation. If you have very little auto correlation, it will look this one here, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. So the auto correlation for the dependence of previous values gets stronger and stronger. Okay, so they're more and more consecutive values are more and more correlated. You have 1.1. So as soon as you get as soon as you go over one, your process explodes. Okay, so you typically these y coefficients must be less than one. Okay, if you think you're less than one, you're greater than minus one. Okay, it's called the thing. If it's greater than one, these things explode. Okay, we can't guess exactly one. Some of very useful models, and that's exactly what that graph will come. But that's also something. Your, your mean can go off, can go off to the central minus infinity, so it wanders away from, from the overall mean. Whereas these first five processes, where the five coefficients are less than one, they all have a constant, so they stationary processes. Okay, so here stationarity means your mean variance correlation, all of these. I don't think of quantity stay constant over time. Um, why is stationarity important? So 
Then that's what always it's meant. Covariances, variances, means, everything is a, a meme of something. The average deviation from, from a mean varies, for example. And if, if things change over time, we can't we can't use the mean to estimate what basically we can't estimate parameters. Our processes are not stationary. Yeah, things change over time because we just have a single time point where the variance is the fat variance and the co variance. If things change over time, we can't estimate all what the parameters be. So non stationary means that your mean changes over the time, your variance changes, your correlation structure, the humanity, all sorts of those things and non stationary data. It's not so critical when, when you try and model this stuff. You're going to try and model the non stationary The change means it's inevitable. Next time. Okay, so the, we talked about also regressive processes. We also have moving average processes for order two, for example. Okay, here you're not, you're not regressing on your previous values, but you're regressing on what's the previous error terms. And you can see that as previous shocks in the system, and those change your, your observations, the sum of, of previous shocks. Okay? But the difference here is that you, you have a shock now, if you have a moving average process of order two, if you have a shock now, you will observe it in the next step and in the next step. Now in the next step, it's only for these three steps that they will be gone. Okay, so it doesn't continue over time. You don't see these shocks or events over time. It just it disappears after three steps. And then the last one is time series process white noise, which is just independent noise, independent mean zero, no autocorrelation. Okay, so two very useful functions to look at this are the autocorrelation function and the partial autocorrelation function. So this is for the sunspot data. Let me go back. Okay, so we're measuring the autocorrelation in different labs and partial autocorrelation. So now you can, that's a way to look at how much autocorrelation is in the data. Is this independent data or do I need a time series model? Okay, so there are different ways. Some of you start at lag zero. Lag zero means I'm correlating now with that. Okay, so that correlation is always one. Some of these plots start at lag one, some of them start at lag zero. Let's stop at that one. Okay, the autocorrelation is about 0 0.8 there. Okay, so it's, you can fairly well predict your the sunspot area now from previous value correlated with previous value. And it's also correlated with two values earlier. But the, and then so this is five values earlier, the correlation of the time series now. And if you shift this by five lakhs, okay, so you're always looking at now, it's five, five point three. There's a negative correlation, okay, and that's because of the light forces in the stuff. We cycle every ten years, the ten years, ten eleven years. Yes. <laughs> so if this peaks 10 years further on, 10 years further on, okay, so that's why it's called positively correlated. What the partial autocorrelation function does, it's, it's taking out, because the autocorrelation, if I'm correlated to my previous 
previous value, that previous value to that previous value, that outside correlation to that previous value. So it gets rid of after the auto correlation has and that one has been explained what what is left over. Okay, so that's the auto correlation that like one. Now it's taking that out. And now you can see almost goes to negative correlation, which means positive. That I call that if I mean that the pink makes that it's auto correlated, but then I'm, I'm going down again. So somewhere I have my previous value was very high, and somewhere else I'm going. So this is um, auto correlation process, auto correlation, auto regressive processes have auto correlation functions that can stay made in auto correlation decrease very slowly. This if you account for the auto regressive function that one and there's no second order to in doing that one. Outside of two limits. So these limits correspond to white noise processes. What you would expect in this Okay. So these also help you to sort of understand what kind of processes It's a bit of an art. Okay, right. I'm going to talk about three approaches to time series modeling. I'm going to talk a bit about arena modeling, then about regression, and then about state based models. So, arena stands for auto regressive integrated moving average models. Um, so, you also have these, these orders. The P stands for order of the auto regressive process, the E stands for the order of differencing, and the Q stands for the order of the moving average. The differencing so this one, right? If this thing is not stationary, if Y observations are not stationary, then they're going to look at the differences. Okay, so the changes from the changes in the time series, this thing relative to that. And then hopefully most things are stationary. So they difference their time series until the things are stationary. And I don't think that's a very good approach to very so we're not going to do that. Um, you also get, I'm also not going to do that, you get auto arena, the function. Just throw your data in and then spin it out. So if you don't want to think, you don't want, you don't care what is going on, you just want to pull across the other spots. Otherwise, if you care about what's going on, then we're going to get to the question. Okay, so you can either ignore your autocorrelation and just do a normal regression, or you can double the autocorrelation. If you ignore it, it's probably often not too serious, but you could do better. Okay, you should create better models, better estimates, better predictions if you don't, if you incorporate the autocorrelation. Um, so the important thing is that you now you should model you shouldn't do this. So you shouldn't add autocorrelated values for values shifted values of the theories itself. You should model the autocorrelation in the errors, okay, in the residuals, rather than than doing something like that, putting in terms of the theories itself. Um, the main reason for this have a regression model. So here you're doing you're doing the usual regression model, being UT by your error terms, and you say your error terms are auto correlated. Okay, so now you've got a large error. Stuff that I haven't explained then in the next time step that error will also be large. <laughs> And that's sort of why they call the expansion variables that are also correlated over time um, that, you, that you haven't captured in your model. Okay, so the important thing is model 
to punish the ignorance and compromises if we are. The problem with people that here is um,
Okay, so just a couple of points on you specified the things are slightly different in five series like regression models. Method values are always one step ahead for months. Yeah, so you use the previous observations as a model to predict your next observation. Yeah, so all the method values, all the red line, the previous plus, those are just constructed using previous models. Observed previous time step. Then residuals are usual residuals, confirmation minus method values, and forecast, strict forecast of this given ZSK is based on observation order, information from time points one up to time t, and this is a bench step ahead forecast. Okay, so I'm really using this is a strict forecast. I only use this information up to here and I'm trying to get H steps. We have splitted values to use all the information to get data, but to get the or to estimate parameters. It's not strictly strict forecast. And then I'm not going to talk any further about this, but we also need to fit H intervals as opposed to one minute intervals. Okay, because we're making Want to know where your next future time point is going to be. We're not interested in the average because we don't think we're ever going to so one one night in the future. Okay, so I've, I've used the arena statement earlier to do the regression, and now I'm going to do something more useful. GLS generalized least squared. Yeah, so this is the usual linear regression model with correlated errors in my group in our MP. Okay, so here you it's just a normal, looks like a usual linear regression. Y as a function of X, and then you can specify different types of correlation structures. Here I'm just going to specify that order and auto regression. Process of order one A or one process, and then errors. Okay, so this also modeling errors. And this is just saying, okay, this is not going to go further than that. And that's one way of doing that. That should give you, or it does, gives you exactly, almost exactly the same as the arena in your And then even more flexible, so this is limited to linear models. You want more flexibility in terms of generalized linear models, current data, binomial data. You can use GANs with autocorrelated errors. And you can use this fact, GAN with double M, in like the end of the GCP. And that's the usual GAN line. I thought that the GAN model, where you can add signs to your so very effects, um, you can change your model to logistic regression, Poisson regression, things like that. Um, yeah, and you can add some relation. Example, okay, so if you look at the state electricity demand on top, here we the effects, this is work day, weekend work day. This is temperature, so let's try and do a useful model to have a regression type model. And what I'm doing, okay, I'm modeling the March, I'm adding this time for the week, and that is doing a long term trend. So this is the, the week's time, so I'm allowing a long term trend over the time. So this is one way modeling the trend, and I've got this time the last flexible curve to plot a linear trend at the time, the flexible curve. Uh, this is temperature, sorry, the top one is the weekly effect, the long term trend. This is the effect of temperature. Okay, low temperatures, electricity demand increases, 
very high temperatures, electricity demand and that's the supply. And then there's a big chain effect. There's this usual type of mesh model, but I'm also plotting correlation. I'm saying there's also correlation that we did this. This is what I did. Looks okay. These peaks are not well extracted for the back of these observations. The peaks are not very well explained. So it's okay. So this, these plots usually look better than they actually are. So if you look, what we should be doing is looking at the residuals of that bandwidth. And the residuals still look very correlated. So there's four correlation in the residuals that I haven't explained. Okay. So now we should uh, do some add some other correlation structures, see what's going on. Probably maybe add a, a daily factor or weekday factor to explain these variations in the week. It's a funny number. This model is not done. It's just the gap. And then the third effect the third approach, just going to do quickly structural time series. So the difference here is that you try and model trend similar to the regression, but it's a bit different. You want to trend. Seasonality, explanatory variables, separate, explicit, rather than differencing them out or doing something with them, trying to model them explicitly. So you say, okay, your vectors, there's a sum of, that is the sum of components, there's a trend part, seasonal part, explanatory variables part, and then average. For example, if you're trying to sort of decompose your, your signal into some topics, so CO2 data, that's the data, there's a seasonal effect, there's a trend effect, and there are these residuals. So you're trying to model everything else, so you're only left with white noise data. And then you can do kind of your model. Okay, so there's a few basic models or building blocks that are used in structural time series and it's actually just the same thing. Same thing. The one is called the local level model. Okay, so here this is the, the B, the level. So you model the level, the, the underlying B changes over time. And here it's just changing over time as the random form. And then the observations just depend on these on the level, okay, there's the mean observation, there's the observation here. Okay. I'm trying to get to something where, where the observation errors are independent, random plots. So you want them the mean separately, and then the observations are just observations of that, that factor. So that's the level. Level model, the local little chips, size four useful. Okay, for the economy, but you're adding the slope coefficient. Okay, so that mean changes slowly over time. And then what we're doing here is that that slope can also change slowly over the time. So you can make it more flexible. So this is just one how the Trend, how flexible the underlying trend. And then with observations as before, it's just an observation based on the, on the current mean. Okay. And the basic structural model, you add the seasonality, so the T 
Thank you. 